It is Wednesday, January 14th, 2026, and I want to talk about our southern snow chances continuing to rise. This is the latest GFS, and you can see what's happening down here in the southeast, also potentially through portions of the central and southern plains. Taking a look at the Euro, it doesn't quite see that southern snow, except for maybe along the coast here, portions of Georgia, the Carolinas, but it does see a ton of snowfall potentially for the northern tier states through portions of the Midwest and then the mid-Atlantic and New England coast. And we could see a major tropospheric polar vortex breakdown just ahead that could lead to record shattering temperatures if this were to occur as we get into the end of January, potentially the beginning of February. So we'll talk about this today a little bit in the video as well. And just about four to five days away, the Euro sees the possibility for wind chills getting as cold as negative 30, negative 40 degrees all the way down into potentially even Iowa. I really appreciate you guys watching this video. If you like this type of content, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. And of course, if you like the video, like the video. Let's get into the weather updates. As I always like to, we're gonna start with our live radar and then we're gonna get into the seven and 10 day forecast. You can see we do have some thunder showers right now, currently moving through portions of Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, into Kentucky. Nothing severe right here, currently just some rain showers. We do also have some thunderstorms moving down here in the south, moving through portions of Louisiana, Mississippi, into Alabama. You can see we have some flash flood warnings down here as well. And we've got a decent low pressure system right here moving its way through southeastern Ontario, out into the south and east. We'll probably see some more precipitation from this over the next 24 to 48 hours as it begins to transition off into the south and east. So inner New England, we could see some snow from this. And we have very cold temperatures diving in behind this as well. We have a trough that's entering the eastern U.S. So expect a little bit of lake effect snow from this system as well. All right, let's get into our 7 to 10 day forecast. And I also want to quickly show you the Euro and GFS because in the short range, we see something very similar. But then as we get into the mid and long range forecast, things start to change. So we'll start with the Euro here. You can see as we move through Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, what's happening? Well, we have a nice amplified trough digging into the east. East, a lot of cold air out east, some snow opportunities. Like I said, that low pressure is moving through the Great Lakes region. We could see some snow through portions of the Ohio Valley, Midwest, out towards New England over the next few days. And again, very cold air diving into the east. Now you can see what happens as we get into Saturday. We get this southwesterly flow. Not a ton of moisture here though. We don't have that blocking out to the east. We're not going to have a stalled front, but a little bit of a dusting is possible through portions of Kentucky, Tennessee, Virginia, maybe even out towards the coast here, the mid-Atlantic coast and New England coast. And of course, up there in the Midwest and inner New England, you're going to see some snow here. Now you can see what happens with the Euro as we get into this Sunday and the GFS sees it too. Maybe some snow along the coast all the way from potentially as far as southern Jersey all the way down to maybe Savannah, Georgia, maybe even Jacksonville, Florida. We'll have to watch this. The 540 line stays just north of Florida so it might be hard to get that snow into northern Florida but could we get some flurries maybe even a little bit of accumulation one two three inches along the coast here it's possible. I do also think it's possible that the snow is a little farther inland. Charlotte, Atlanta, we'll have to see. Obviously these systems can shift back and forth when we're out here at 100 plus hours. Now, as we get into early next week, this cold air continues to dive into the east Tuesday, Wednesday, and we continue to stay warm out west. We're under a ridge, above average temperatures, dry conditions, and you can see that moisture beginning to move in off the Gulf as well. We may have some thunderstorms down here as we get into the middle of next week. Again, cold air continuing to barrage the east. Let's push towards the next weekend. We start to get more of a zonal flow, but we get a lot of this cold, dry air interacting with this moisture off the Gulf. And you can see the Euro puts this snowstorm really up towards Chicago, maybe Milwaukee, Minnesota, Des Moines. We'll have to see. Obviously, there's plenty of time for this to change. That system moves out. More cold air is going to begin to dive into the east, and then the Euro puts a big snowstorm out here through portions of the Midwest and the Mid-Atlantic. We're talking DC, Baltimore, Philly, New York City up to Boston, big snow towards the end of the model run though. So take that with a grain of salt what's happening there. Let's compare this to the GFS. In the short term, the GFS obviously sees this storm moving off into the east. I showed you this on the live radar. This snow, the slow pressure moving down to the south and then beginning to move out. We have a lot of moisture off the coast, a lot of cold air beginning to dive in. This is as we push through Wednesday into Thursday. Now getting into Friday, Saturday, just like the European, they both agree, tons of cold air pushing down into the east. You can see our 540 line trying to dig into the Gulf. This is gonna give us that opportunity for that southeasterly snow. You can see right here pushing into Sunday. Boom, the GFS sees it as well. Potentially snow from Southern Jersey all the way down through portions of Georgia as well, central to southern Georgia. Again, Atlanta, Charlotte, Savannah, maybe out there towards Virginia Beach, portions of eastern Maryland, Delaware, southern Jersey. It's all possible the Euro and GFS see it. This isn't La La Land. We're talking about 100 to 120 hours out. Pay attention to this this weekend. Maybe some nice winter snow. And I know a half inch, an inch, two inches might not seem like a lot, but a lot of people down here, that's pretty rare. They would be very happy to get some snow on the ground, especially any sort of accumulation on the ground here. So kind of rooting for this to happen for you guys. There is a small chance again, though, maybe this tries to dig in a little bit closer to the coast. Maybe you try to get a little 
tiny bit, maybe a mini nor'easter setting up here, we'll say. But again, right now the models take this thing off the coast. But before they take the system off the coast, they try to put snow, like I said, down to the southeast. So that's exciting. I'll continue to track this, especially as we get into our short ranges here in the next couple of days. Pushing out towards next week, there's that polar jet collapsing. Now, this is when the GFS and the Europeans start to see things a little bit differently. The European wants to begin to get more of a zonal flow, get that polar jet through the center of the country. The GFS continues to drive this south, and you see you get another snow opportunity, potentially through portions of Mississippi, Georgia, Tennessee. We'll have to see how that develops, and then you get more snow out there through the mid-Atlantic on the GFS. This is getting into early next week. Moving forward a little bit, you can see the GFS and Euro kind of have a similar idea. Still very dry out west under a ridge above average temperatures. Still very cold out east, but not a lot of moisture. Now we get towards the end of the GFS run, and this is again where the Euro and GFS kind of are on the same page, but not really as well. Cold air continuing to barrage the east. A lot of moisture in the center of the country here from potentially a southwesterly flow, maybe some moisture moving in off the Pacific, some from the Gulf. The GFS, though, kind of throws this snowstorm away and doesn't really put a big system out towards the mid-Atlantic. But again, end of the run, anything can change there. It is interesting in the beginning of the run, we have those snow chances in the south. We have those clippers moving through the Midwest out towards the mid-Atlantic, New England. So, and really just the barrage of cold air out east. The models agree on that. So, southern snow, barrage of cold air out east over the next seven to 10 days. Confidence is way up. Take a look at the GFS. Now, this is all the way through 384 hours out. So like I always say, take it with a grain of salt, but GFS giving us a chance for some snow in places that haven't seen much or any this year. Kansas, Oklahoma, look at that. Maybe down in southwestern Texas. Obviously, the Euro and GFS want to put the snow along the coast somewhere. You see our opportunities in Tennessee, Mississippi, and Alabama. And then again, the Midwest up through inner New England. You guys have already seen plenty of snow, but that's the GFS. Take a look at the Euro. Northern tier states getting buried. Great Lakes region, portions of the Midwest getting buried, and then the Mid-Atlantic and New England. I know this is through 384 hours out. I just want to show you the difference between the models, but obviously this would be great for portions of the Mid-Atlantic and New England coast if this were to occur. So the confidence in this barrage of cold air over the next couple of weeks out east is pretty high, at least over the next week is pretty high. You can see below average temperatures here, another round here, another round here, but something happens at the end of this model run. Now, the reason I'm going to talk about the end of the models here, even though it's so far out is just like I said last week, when all the ensembles were showing this cold air, that's almost inevitably going to move in now. The Climate Prediction Center sees it as well. Our ensembles are finally in agreement again. The first two weeks of January, it was a mess. They're getting their act together mid-January, and they're starting to agree on something happening out here towards January 23rd through the 27th. This is potentially record shattering cold air for Western Canada. And you see what happens as we get towards the end of the run. Some of this cold air tries to dive down into the States. Now this would likely have the chance of breaking all time cold temperature records through this region. The GFS sees this a little bit differently. I'm gonna show you here. The GFS does see these very cold anomalies. You can see them moving down into the States here, January 23rd, 24th, 25th. Again, this would give us the opportunity for really, really record breaking cold air. But then the GFS kind of moves this out and tries to bring in some warmer air at the end of the model run, whereas the Euro has a ton of cold air supplied here. Why is this happening? Well, let's take a look at our 500 millibar height anomaly. Here we are right now. I want you to pay attention to the Arctic region. I want you to pay attention to what's happening out here over Europe, what's happening here over Alaska. We're going to get some very amplified ridges, very negative EPO, and you're going to see that European ridge beginning to dig into our tropospheric polar vortex. And remember, when we have a stratospheric polar vortex breakdown, that cold air lag can be anywhere from two to four weeks. When we get a tropospheric polar vortex breakdown, which is this, that cold air can be almost immediate, can be within the week, can be within a few days. Let's push forward here as we get to the 20th, 21st, 22nd. Notice this European ridge, an extremely amplified Alaskan ridge pushing into the Arctic in the troposphere. This would be a complete breakdown of the tropospheric polar vortex. And you can see what's happening to the south here over the states. Coldest air on the planet is diving south. This is what the European sees. And you can see that warm air completely, completely, or above average air, above average heights, completely takes over the Arctic. And now you have very, very cold air, the coldest air on the planet diving down into the States. And notice potentially a little bit of a negative NAO setting up here, or potentially a major negative NAO setting up here as well. Now that was just the control run. Let's take a look at the European ensemble. There it is. This is all the members put together. See these ridges driving into the Arctic, a major tropospheric polar vortex breakdown. Our GFS ensemble, ensemble sees it as well. And our Canadian ensemble, well, there it is. So again, models are in agreement. They're singing the same tune. This could be a major, major weather story if we continue to see this trend as we push through this week. Like I said, I'm talking record shattering cold air. And depending on what's happening with our moisture in the US, obviously that could put some snow in very interesting places towards the end of January into the beginning of February. I'm going to be watching this closely. Four to five days out as we get into early next week, could we see temperatures 
Wind chills potentially get into the negative 40s in Minnesota. The European thinks so. Freezing air, we could see wind chills negative 20 in Chicago. You could see getting into the negative 20 to negative 30s in Iowa. Wind chills in the negatives pushing down into St. Louis, almost down into Kentucky here. So in the short range, lots of cold air. Just for fun, I'll show you if the European were to be correct about the end of this run. Well, we're seeing potentially wind chills trying to get down into the negative 40s to negative 50s up here at the portions of the upper Midwest. Here is what this would look like without wind chills. We're talking again, negative 20 negative 30s potentially up in this region. The last thing I really wanted to show you guys before I wrapped up this video was our AI models. Take a look at our Arctic Oscillation on the European AI model. Look at the mean, very, very negative. And you think that's negative? Take a look at the graph cast. It's off the charts and I'm not even talking the control. Our mean is trying to push off the charts too. Do I think we're gonna see this? I mean, this would be, like I said, this would be the weather story potentially of the year. If we were to see our AO drop down like this, getting negative 50, negative 60 degree wind chills down into the States. I don't know about that. Now the graph cast is supposed to be one of our best models moving forward, although it's an AI model that is still training so it is going to make mistakes here and there could this be one of those mistakes potentially but pretty crazy pattern ahead guys i will be live streaming again today but it's going to be closer to the evening time likely closer to seven or eight o'clock i will get on my discord to update everyone and i'll probably make a post as well on my socials about when i'm going live because i really want to talk to you guys about this on my live stream and answer all of your questions again i really appreciate you guys watching this video if you like this type of content like i said don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell and like the video if you like the video i am back from vacation so i do plan on posting every day live streaming every single day and if you want to join an awesome weather community don't forget to join my discord connor's climate corner hq there's a link to my discord in all of my youtube videos and it is completely free lots of great weather knowledge in there weather updates and a great weather community again thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video or the next live stream